welcome on back where we're going to briefly talk about the co-function and even odd identities. These are uh, 12 functions or identities that, again, you can copy down. They will be provided on the formula chart, but again, it's about understanding how to use them. Why are they relevant? So really what the co-function identity is, is they are the complementary angles. And recall that complementary angles are something that uh, two angles that uh, add up to that 90 degree, whereas supplementary angles are two angles that add up to that 180 degree. And why is this important? Well, we've dealt with supplementary angles when we did the law of signs ambiguous case. But here we're dealing with complementary angles when you have a cofunction identity. What that really means in layman's term is that you are moving over by one whole quadrant. Pi over two is equal to 90 degrees. So it is a complementary angle. It's not supplementary. It's not moving by pi, so it's not 180 degrees. It's not even moving by two pi. It's not moving the whole period. It's moving a quarter of the period. One quadrant, quarter, quad. So make sure you're thinking in fourths, okay? So it is one quadrant over. And even odd is what happens when the angle is negative. In some of our functions, it's going to flip it over the x-axis. In some of our functions, it's going to stay the same. So or not flip it, sorry, I should say the appropriate vocabulary word. Um, it's going to reflect over the x-axis. So uh, make sure you can recognize those and what they are. But to give you a better idea, I've got a Desmos visual representation. So here I have sine of x. And if I literally take this point and move it to the left by uh, a pi over 2, basically, I end up with this one right here. Ta-da! Oops. Okay, so if I literally took, let me zoom in, sorry. If I literally took this point and moved it to the left by pi over 2, then you end up with the value you want. But what is that graph? That's the graph of cosine. So you can clearly see that if I shift by a quadrant, and this is if you can kind of see my dots, and let me see if I can put it in projector mode real quick. There we go. You can see my dots as they appear, disappear. Sine is literally equal to cosine shifted by one quadrant. That's what I'm showing you. And let's look at cosine. So here is cosine. Again, if I shift it by one quadrant to the left, then you are looking here, this point comes over, and you're actually looking at the sine graph. Ta-da! But let's look at that visually here. If I place my literal sine of pi over 2 minus x over it, it's, those are what those dots are showing up. So it's just a visual representation that it's a literal shift. Okay, what about secant and cosecant? Here's secant, here's cosecant. The dots, ooh, let me projector mode this. The dots are putting over the cofunction identity, and then here are your dots. Okay, what about tangent? This one's a little bit different. Tangent, um, you're actually looking at the cotangent negative x. Okay, and so because of that, you're, here is that dotted view. And then here is cotangent and its dotted view. Again, you can practice these on Desmos. I have literally set this up so you can copy it. You can visualize it yourself, desmos.com backslash calculator. Again, you can plug those in yourself. What about the even odd? Well, here is sine of negative x, and look what happens when I have sine uh, reflected over the x. Ta-da, it's the literal same value. What about cosine? Cosine of negative x doesn't change anything. What about tangent? Tan of negative x becomes negative tan x. What about cosecant? What about, okay, again, you can set yourself up to visually see they are, they are literally the same thing. That's what these cofunction and even odd identities are. All right, there's your chance to answer a question.